everybody. It's in. I'm back. Anyway, I have had a couple of people ask me about getting started with working with plated eyes. Plated eyes are the bane of my existence, but unless I have my eyes put through surgery to revise the skin, I'm going to have them until they put me under. The main thing about hooded eyes, and it's one of the issues with deep set eyes, is that because the skin here, when it does its thing, hooded eyes fold down to the lash line, deep set eyes actually sneak some skin back under the eye socket and fold a little bit of the lower lid and some of the upper lid back in. You get transfer because of that skin rubbing. That's one of the biggest things that just chaps my never mind. Anyway, I've got a little bit of base on because otherwise since my skin has decided to be all red today, it would be distracting. Not a lot, nothing much. I mean, it took me about five minutes to throw this stuff on and leave my eyes. My eyes take me the longest. Anyway, the main fix. I hate that telephone. That's the kid's telephone. It's like, yes, my adult children live with me. Well, one of my adult children lives with me. His wife and their two children live with me. And then there's poor Mr. Jim. But their phone also rings in my room without fail. If I'm trying to do something, that bugger will ring. Anyway, one of the things that we're going to do is take a flat brush. This is just a, you know, like painting a straight line. Penny, are you done? Uh-huh. Stop eating the stuffing out of the toys. We're going to take a flat brush, and we're going to redefine where the crease is. Because you see all this stuff in here, like open my eyes and relax my forehead, it drops right down to the eyelashes. Not a big help. This lower lid disappears. It used to be not quite so bad. It didn't come down quite so far, so I had this little strip of lower lid. Not so much anymore. What do you do? This is what you do. Now, if you do not have any makeup currently, because you haven't started doing stuff, there's not a lot that you need to be able to carry any of this off. You don't have to go out and buy, you know, ABH. You don't have to go out and get Tarte. If it's not in your budget and it's not what you want, don't get it. I mean, I have my own issues with Wet n' Wild. But this is a Wet n' Wild palette. This runs between 6 and 10 at the drugstore. It's got light colors. It's got dark colors. It's got some other colors. What the main thing is, is there's darks and there's lights. And those are things you're going to need to do this little fix. Now, for another one that runs about $10 for a palette, is Elf. This one is called Mad for Mats. Now, if you are afraid because of your age that a shimmer is not something you should be wearing, take yourself in hand and tell yourself to get over. There is nobody but you who can tell you what colors to wear, what finishes to wear, whether or not to wear. And if somebody comes up and tries to do fashion police on you and tells you, tells you you're too old for a shimmer, tell them to trot on. Anyway, this is the nude rose gold from e.l.f. No, I am not sponsored. I don't, for one thing, my channel's too small for that bus. Um, but this is another one. There's, there's darks, there's lights, there's stuff in the middle.
Now, with this flat brush, once we get started, I'm going to show you where or how to determine where to put your new crease line because we're going to do a little visual redirection. You don't have to have expensive eye primer, but I'm telling you, eye primer is a godsend. You don't have to have it. You don't have to use it. You don't have to buy something that's specifically called eye primer. This one is a kiss product, and it's called Ruby Kisses. It's a basic, beigey kind of eye primer. I picked it on picked it up online through AliExpress for a couple of bucks. Two bottles for a couple of bucks. You can get it off of Amazon for about eight bucks. AOA Studio, still not sponsored, is another one of the companies that I use a lot of their stuff. These are just concealers. I have a beige concealer, I have a white concealer. I use the white concealer most often if I'm going for a lot of bright colors that I really want to make them pop. I'm probably going to use that one today, mainly because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing easier. It will be a lot more stark than it needs to be for what you do when you do it. This is so you can actually see the technique. The main idea of an eye primer. See, I've got red here, discoloration, I've got little veins, da da da. It's old creepy skin because I'm 61. It's also loose and creepier on top of that because I used to weigh 450 pounds. I am now under 300. Taking off that much weight changes your skin texture and the way it lays on your body because where fat pads used to be, this used to be all raised up. Where fat pads used to be, you now have divots. And let's not talk about the hangy stuff under the arms. Mm -hmm. Any of you have seen my, some of my summer stuff with my just my little tank tops already know about that. You can put this on, with the eye primer, you can put this on several ways. You can use a sponge. You can use a brush, or you can stick your finger in. This has got a little doe foot applicator, and all I do is rub the product kind of in the center off of a little applicator. And then I've got my favorite brush, which has gotten stained, and I just work that across the eye from the inside to the outside picking up the product and going around and around. Now, I've already got some concealer under here, but it's my regular face concealer because I've got really heavy bags and veins under there. But when I'm doing my eyes, I take whatever's left on the brush and just kind of run it under. Just because. Now, not everybody does their under eye. If you don't want to, especially if you're just getting started with stuff, that's up to you. I've been doing this long enough now that it kind of feels unfinished if I don't do the under eye at least a little. Now, you can get inexpensive but still very nice products from the local drugstore or like Sally Beauty, um, if you're not in the United States, that's just a professional but open to the public beauty supply. Some beauty supplies carry makeup that they will sell to the public. You don't have to have your licensing. Some beauty supplies are professional only, fine by me. I used to have a license. Used to be a cosmetician. This kind of stuff usually falls under the esthetist these days. 
back when I was first starting to do this stuff with, you know, the license debt. They wanted everybody to be under the one label. And now they've kind of split it out so that people who don't want to do hair, they just want to do makeup, can do the esthetician thing, whatever. Anyway, got the primer on. It dries down relatively quick. Some primers make me mad because they dry down too fast. And if they dry down too fast, you don't get a chance to smear it out where you need it. And you don't get an even application. Once it's dry, it still is likely going to have a little sticky feel to it. That's okay. It'll hold on to your makeup. Now, if you're trying to do something really just smooth and blend it a lot, what you may want to do is grab up a kind of floofier brush. See, floofy. Floofy. Let's see if I can get this right here. Floofy. And take something like this very light color here, which is a matte and a pale kind of cream color and go over your primer area just to kind of put a fine layer of powder there so that whatever you lay on next will glide. If you want to keep it so it's stuck where you put it, you really don't want to do this. If you're packing on lots and lots of heavy color, don't set your primer. It'll mess you up. Now, when we're working with heavily need of, of repositioning of crease eyes, the brushes make a big difference. A lot of people with hooded eyes. Now my phone's gone. I'm going to try to edit that bit out. Damn thing. You don't normally have that much space to work with if you've got hooded eyes. I hate my phone. Thank you. Anyway, when you're working with hooded eyes, you don't always have a lot of space. And once you reposition your crease, it definitely changes the amount of space you have up here because you're actually moving your crease up visually, which means visually you have a whole lot less space in this area. So much fun. I use, now these are e.l.f. brushes, no, not sponsored, but they have my two of my favorite sizes. Let's see, one's a little bigger, one's a little smaller, but they're both rounded at the top and very dense. The smaller one is called the eye crease brush. The slightly larger one is called the blending brush. You can pick these up anywhere from the drugstore to online from e.l.f. to um, sometimes at Dollar Tree. But you're looking for the shape, not the brand. You're looking for the shape. Let me say that a third time. You are looking for the shape. Pretty densely packed, so it's not floofy, doesn't bend as easy. Rounded, and this is in a round brush, not just a rounded top. Both of these are round brushes, rounded top, just a bit. And what I do is I take that flat brush. Now, this is technically an eyebrow brush because there's your spoolie at the other end. But it makes a nice, fine, straight line. You pick up your palette, whichever palette you have decided you need to use, and you pick up one of the darker matte colors. I'm going to pick up this brown down here, that one right there. And I'm going to look at my eye and look where the lines fall, 
And I'm looking at putting my new crease somewhere about here. This is something that you have to figure out for yourself. You need to look at your mirror with your eye eyebrows relaxed and your eyes open and figure out where that line goes. What's going to be visible? Because to get the colors that you put on your lid to show up when your eyes are open, you have to have some space in here to put it. So you're going to not put your crease where the natural crease is, because that's going to be gone in a minute. Open your eyes, it disappears. So you're going to make a visual, kind of a tromboy. You're going to do a little makeup magic and fool the eye. I've got that dark brown, and I'm starting over here kind of, and then I kind of sketch, so, some people will do an absolutely flat line going across. I don't, I don't feel comfortable with that. I kind of go right at the top. You can use, sort of use the crinkly part of your natural crease. I just kind of go right at the top and kind of follow it over in a little arc. Like I said, some people will show you how to do it in a dead straight line. It's not wrong. This is not necessarily correct. It's how it works for me, which is the idea. You want to do it how it works for you. Now, you're going to try and get an approximately the same shape on this side. Your eyes and face are not symmetrical. The best you can hope for is close. You try to get the shapes that you want, and you try to get the shapes to kind of mirror each other as best you can, given that your eyes are not symmetrical. They don't sit symmetrical on your face. They're not symmetrical side to side. They're not symmetrical from size to size. They just aren't. We're human. We don't have symmetrical. You want symmetrical? Get yourself an AI unit. They get to do symmetrical. Once I've got that line there, I pick up the smaller of the two brushes that I was showing you, and I pick up whatever other color that I intend to use after I kind of soften this a little bit. Just kind of put some swirlies in there so it's not as stark. You'll still be able to see where the guideline is. If you put a big dark line there and leave it like that, people are going to look at you and go, what were you trying to do? Unless you take like some gold glitter eyeliner and lay over it and then you can look at them and go, it's the latest thing off the catwalk. And then walk on. Because they will go crazy looking it up. Now, I'm going to pick up this brown up here, which is, it's close to terracotta, but it's not quite as bright. And I'm just going to pick it up on the same brush and start working it over the other color in that homemade crease. And I do little circles instead of the windshield wiper because my skin is creepy, my skin is loose. And if you use the little circles, you have more of a chance that you're going to not have tiger stripes because if you do, if you do this and you've got loose skin, it's going to bunch up. And if it bunches, if it bunches up, you know, if you're doing this and the skin starts bunching up, you're going to get color on the top of those ridges and nothing down in the valleys. So that when you stop doing and your eye relaxes, you've got tiger stripes. And having the tiger stripes like that means that at some point during the day, 
the stuff that's packed on top of those ridges is going to start flaking off and cascading down your face. It's not pretty. Okay, doing the same thing over here. I'm still trying to get used. I keep fiddling with my camera setup. And this time, I just realized looking over at the monitor that my hand Unless I bring them way up, my hands are below the monitor. Below the. That's what I was doing. My hands don't rattle around the way the skin on my eyes do. I keep wanting to pull my chair up just a little bit, you know, on the riser. But if I do that, my little short legs complain. Now, you want to attempt to get the amount of color that you've got on one side to look pretty close to what you've got on the other side. If you end up having to fiddle it a bit, that's okay. You're allowed. The squeaky noise is my little dog with his toys under the desk scraping them up against the side of the desk. He's decided he must be annoying. And now he's moving the desk. So I'm getting shaky. Camera shaky. There. Hopefully he'll quit. Yes, I've tried occasionally putting both of my doggies out of the room. And they stand at the door and scratch. Just doesn't help. Now, see, the, the darker color here makes it look, look like it's receding. Making it look like it's receding is the idea. Because you want it to look like that's the crease. Dog, you're being a pain in my butt. Now, I'm going to take this light purple kind of a lavender shade. This is the Rosé in Air palette. And so it's got some kind of wine tones here and there along with the browns and such. I'm going to start here and I'm going to bring it across and I'm going to be dipping just into the edge of that crease color and keep dragging it back and forth here. And I'm trying to leave a little space, and I, I'm telling you, it's like me little space to use for a little brow bone highlight after I put my eyebrows on. Now, I'm going to keep reminding people, you don't have to put your eyebrows on if you don't want to. If you've got nice thick eyebrows, just keep them neat. You don't have to necessarily put eyebrows on. Nobody's going to hold you down and staple them. I put the eyebrows on because when I was a little bitty baby, I was born with white blonde hair. As I aged towards teenager, it went to kind of a medium strawberry blonde. And then... By the time I got into high school, it was kind of a honey blonde. And then, by the time I got to about 25, it started doing that thing that I'm told was called, but called by the Victorians, white mouse. You know, that kind of ashy, almost dirty dishwater blonde. I was not happy. By the time I got to my 30s, it was dark mouse. And let's not forget the gray that was starting to sneak in. So, yeah. I started getting crazy coloring my hair. And then, because of one of my autoimmune issues, my hair started falling out. It used to be thick, but it was that fine crap that just kind of like did nothing. And with it falling out, 
That was also about the time I hit hot flashes. So much fun. So I pretty much kept my head very closely cropped. I hadn't quite gotten to this point. However, at one point I was so mad about the hot flashes, I shaved my head bald. And I have on occasion during hot weather done it again. Currently, it's a mohawk. The pink <coughs> for most of the fall. For my Christmas present, my husband helped me bleach out just the top section. And the pink is what is left of the purple after the bleach. That was some strong purple. And I'm about due for another haircut because the sides are getting long. Even in the winter, because at 61, I still have hot flashes. All the rest of it is done. But I still have hot flashes. And I will sit and just grip. Middle of winter. I hate it. Doesn't happen often anymore, but damn. Oh, pardon my French. I don't know why I call it French other than that's just the way we'd always said it when I was a kid. And if I have any French visitors, I apologize. I'm lousy with languages. I really am. Okay, now, under the brow bone here, I'm going to take this shimmery cream which, next to the first one I used. And just basic brush. Again, this one is round, but it's got a slight angle to the dome. And I'm going to go like this. Right along under the eyebrow. This is basically just to kind of separate the main colors from that eyebrow. It'll separate a little more once I put the eyebrow products on. And now I'm looking for one of my flat brushes here. There we go. I'm going to start working on this section. Now, we're back to the thing of if somebody tells you you cannot wear a shimmer because of your age, tell them to trot on. If someone tries to tell you you can't wear colors because of your age, because for the longest time I've been hearing that if you're over a certain age, you should be using nothing but neutral browns. And it's like, bite me. <coughs> It's like, you can't tell me what to do. Now, I'm taking this maroon shade just a little bit on this flat brush. It's still got kind of a rounded top because it's just a nice brush. And I'm going to start working over here. And I'm just going to kind of lay that color in. Now, if you're not somebody who's into bright colors or lots of colors or you don't want to use shimmer you can stop here in just a second you can basically just take this shade and go all the way across if you want and you're done it's up to you Makeup. Makeup is the magic of fooling the eye, but it's also a form of another type of art. It's using color to make yourself feel better. It's reshaping how you look here with how you feel here. If you don't look happy, because, okay, I've got one of those resting biatch faces, some fears, scares people. If I put some color on my face, I look a little happier. If I'm taking care of myself, because I consider this self-care, I feel a little happier. And it's going to reflect on your face. You know, if you're happy without makeup, 
go right on about yourself. Can't nobody tell you how to take care of yourself. If you want to wear makeup and you haven't before, this is where you start. And then you just keep practicing. If you've got hooded eyes, this is a good starter point. Is it the perfect starter point? No. You're going to want to look at hooded eye tutorials from Wayne Goss. If you've got deep set eyes, you're going to want to look at tutorials done by Angie from 4F Beauty or Nikki Raven. You're going to need to look at other people's films to see what they've done. There's no one way to do this. Okay, now, see, when I close, open my eyes, relax the forehead, you can still see colors. You don't have an absolutely colorless eye. And I'm going to take some of this pale grayed lavender again that I put up here in the top. I'm going to put it in the inner corner. We like to keep the inner corner light because that way your eyes don't appear to run together like a bandit mask. Now, if you are of mind to, you can put some soft shimmer in this in this look, or you can stop. Again, it's up to you where you stop. I tend to be a little extra. I'm picking up this wine shimmer. And since it's darker than the other colors, I'm starting out here. You want to draw the eye away from the center, the other people's eyes, away from the center so that it doesn't look like your eyes are sitting right on top of each other. It's one of the tricks that they use in theater and film to make the eyes look like they're not just run together here across the nose. They put darker colors out here. They put lighter colors in here. And if you're used to looking at colors, your eye will tend to go from light to follow the, to the darker, richer color. You don't have to get crazy. I'm not wetting this shimmer this time because I'm not necessarily going for everybody seeing the shimmer. I just want to use this darker color to kind of darken up that outer corner. Now, if you really want it to show up, I'll do that on a different one. If you really want this stuff to show up as shiny glittery, you can spray it with a little water, a little setting spray, whatever. And it will bring the sparkle out some more. And then I'm going to take the edge, the top edge of this brush, and I'm dipping it back into that maroon shimmer. And I'm going to carry it right down under the eye, just to carry that color around. Well, like I said, you don't have to, but I've gotten so used to doing the under eye, it doesn't look complete, unless I do. You don't have to even use the same colors that you've been using for the rest of the eye look. You can put something completely different in if you want. That's up to you. This is where some people get a little bit quirky, and they'll put like, maybe, they'll do something dark like this, and then maybe put a green under. 
or they'll do something light and put something really dark in it. It's up to you. I'm doing what I'm doing just because. I'm going to pick up this tan down here. And now I'm going to run that a little bit, not all the way over, but a little bit under where I put that shimmer. The second color gives it a little more depth. And then I'm going to find another brush and I'm going to go back into this champagne glitter well not glitter it's a shimmer champagne shimmer and i'm going to put that on the inner corner here that little bit of pale in the inner corner is again part of fooling the eye into believing your eyes are wider apart So the eye of the beholder is looking and going, oh, look, nice wide set eyes. Looks great. La, la, la. Like I said, some of this is a little more elaborate than you necessarily need. But this is just a basic, simple look that is taken my weird eye creases into consideration. As long as you've got some lights and some darks and some mid midtones, you can do it. You can go to Dollar Tree and get a four color quad and come home and do a basic look. Now this is also for someone who's going through transition and they're just now learning to use makeup appropriate because maybe they're a little older and they've not been attempting to, to present for very long and they're just starting their transition journey this is a good way to practice this is just makeup it will wash off you can wash it off three or four times a day carefully don't pull your skin too much re-moisturize every time you've done that and reapply it if it doesn't look right, wash it off and reapply it. Now, I can tell you because sometimes if I'm having a really good day, I will do two to three films in one day. But that's only if. And usually at about three, my eyes are getting kind of cranky about the wash it off, put it back. Now, I'm going to do my eyebrows just a little bit. My eyebrows unlike the rest of my hair, tended to stay closer to that strawberry blonde I started off with. So I take a very light brown pencil. This is the e.l.f. pencil. I buy the e.l.f. pencil because depending on where you get it, it's two to three dollars. That's it. I am not sponsored. I don't know that ELF actually does sponsors. I don't know. I've never asked. I haven't seen one that I know of. And I've done, I've done full face of ELF before because I have the um, foundation and I've got primers and you've seen I've got eyeshadow and I've got eye primer and all of that lovely stuff and lipsticks, and blushes, and bronzers. We'll get into the rest of that later in a different bid. Now, see, I at one point was convinced that I needed to pluck my eyebrows, something fierce, and I have since then, partially because of losing a lot of hair, including the eyebrows and my eyelashes, I have been using a growth formula on my lashes and brows to try to repair some of the damage I did to myself with all the plucking. Now, when I first started doing this channel way back when, 
in 2018. Literally, there was nothing. There was no hair out here. It was just these little knobs. I've actually got a couple of places in some videos where I put up pictures to compare. And no eyebrows. I had little knobs and naked. And I started using some of the castor oil based um, just brush it on uh, serums and such to try and get them to build. And it's worked. I now have eyebrows again. <clears throat> I've got eyelashes, which is pretty cool. I've got a bunch of different eyeliners. Bunch. B unch. And with all these different eyeliners, I've got pencils, I've got liquids, I've got um, different versions of the liquids. I've got liquids like this, which has got a little separate brush inside. I've got liquids with little felt tips. I've got stuff. And if you like a pencil, one of the best pencils I have run into is a 99 cent pencil from Wet n Wild. Like I said, I have my own problems with Wet n Wild, but it is a very affordable brand. If it works for your budget, go for it. 99 cents. If you're not necessarily into black, if you've got a more subtle, they've got a brown. No drag, soft, creamy, wine like forever, 99 cents. This is a liquid from a company called Color Workshop that I got in a gift set. It's one of the ones with the little brush that sits down in the fluid in the little bottle. I like to use brown a lot if it's just, you know, an everyday look. And no, don't expect me to try to do great working wings. Look where that line stops. Where am I going to put the wing that it's not going to crunkle? So I just put a line at the base of the eyelashes and go on. It's basically just enough to make the eyelashes stand out a little bit. Now you can get You can get eyeliner and such in all manner of colors. Currently, you can get mascara in all manner of colors. Trying to find it on the regular when it's not popular, trying to find brown mascara is a pain in the tush. So I'm, I'm stuck with black. Now, believe it or not, if you look at the... Look at the mascaras. They have different levels of black. Some of them say blackest black. Some of them say brown black. Some of them say blue black. It's just figure out which one works. Which one works for you. Now, because I wear glasses, I tend to look for mascara with one of the funky brushes. It looks kind of like a Christmas tree. Not nearly as long as the one from Benefit, the Bad Gal Bang, but that shape. Because what I'm looking for is volume more than length. If the lashes are too long, they brush black streaks down the back of my lenses. I don't have contacts. So I look for a mascara that's got volume rather than length. And that's why I got this one. This one's from Clean Color, and it was a buck fifty. 
If you can't find clean color in the stores, they have an online presence. You can still get your stuff. You really can. I don't worry about getting too much eyelash most of the time. If I really want my eyelashes to stand out, I've got some really shorty. It's the Kara, K-A-R-A, -A, eyelash line in the 100% human hair. It's the leftovers for making human hair wigs. And they're in the S2 style, and they are short. It adds a lot of volume, but they don't impact my glasses. which I think is wonderful. I don't wear them all the time, but they're relatively inexpensive. And the ones I get are from AOA Studios, also called Shop Miss A. And most of their stuff is a dollar. I mean, really nice eyelashes for a dollar. They have brick and mortar stores in Texas. But most of the stuff I do is online because I'm in Oregon, not Texas. But they have several in their home state. Now, that basically just makes, I'll be right back. <clears throat> that basically just makes my eyelashes look a little thicker. Makes them easier to see. Makes, them, makes it easier to see that I've got some. This is another one piece that's, yeah, you can do it if you want. But there's nobody telling you, you've got to. I'm do a little bit of color on the waterline. This one's called Copper Gleam, and it's a clean it's it's a clean color that I just got in this morning. I do some of that rebate stuff that gives you cash back on stuff you buy. And one of the rebate companies cashed me out recently for, it was for so many odd points. And then yeah, it was a $10, $10 cash out onto a online Visa card. So I went on Clean Color and looked up some stuff that I've been looking for. And I found a couple of lipstick colors I wanted. I got a couple of the little eye pencils. And I got the mascara. And it was not only dirt cheap because it was under six bucks for the total. But, you know, since it was a small order, I had to pay for shipping. And that ten bucks covered the whole thing. <laughs> And I'm going, yeah, left me about 20 cents, but hey, I don't mind paying for shipping and waiting a couple of days, you know? It's, it's, it's not painful. Now, I got some nifty looking stuff from my Ipsy bag. And I've put most of my face on. I just need to finish up here a little bit. I love getting my Ipsy bag. If you're not normally a makeup buyer, Ipsy, not sponsored, Ipsy and some of the other um, subscription companies send you anything from sample sizes, like that kind of thing. This is a Rose Absolute Serum. And yeah, that's the sample size. They send you anything sometimes from a sample size. That's a sample size. This is the Nomad Cosmetics 
highlighter in shade Balmoral Beach. Sometimes they send you full size things like this brush. You never know entirely. But check out, just go in and look at makeup subscription boxes. If you're not in the US, I know because I follow some other people who are not in the US, there are makeup subscription boxes all over the place. Figure out which one fits your budget. And it's a great way to try out companies you can't necessarily otherwise afford. Let's see. Ciate London. That's a blush. That's a little bitty blush. If you're just getting started in makeup, this is a great way to try out stuff without spending a fortune. I spent 12 bucks on my Ipsy bag. I get it once a month. This little bitty blush, it's a full thickness of this, okay? It's a tiny little blush. But you need so blessed little of it that this lasts for months. Same thing with this highlighter. You need so blessed little of it. And this one's this one's from Tarte. This is a little bronzer. Same bit. That's a lot. Because there's enough product in there that it's going to last for months. Literally. But like, this is a full-size lipstick. This one's a Bella Pierre. Fancy company. I haven't tried them before. Always fun to find a, find a new brand that you haven't tried. Yes, I have discovered that some of this more expensive makeup is absolutely delightful. The formulas are good. The formulas are great in some cases. However, Stuff don't fit my budget. I've got some cheap highlighters in the same color. Do they feel the same? No. But I can work with that. I like using these like this. See, all you're getting, if, you're, if they're seeing you from the side, with this little sheen. If they're looking at you front on, there's nothing to see, which is how a highlighter is supposed to work. I usually put some around my eyes, kind of connect it in. And yeah, I let it flip over down here into this space where I put that other light color. How you put your highlighter on is up to you. For the most part, though, Unless you're doing something where you need a lot of glitter and gleam and bling, go light-handed until you decide how much is right for you. Some people, the first thing they will tell you straight up is they are highlighter addicted and want to gleam until they can be seen from the space station. They want to be signaling aliens. I do too once in a while. Depends on what I'm doing. I don't really worry about signaling aliens if all I'm doing is going to the grocery store. Now, nice thing about having these videos is if you want, you can download them to your own computer. You can stop them and replay them. You can keep a video that works for you on hand so you can look at it again and again and again. Now I'm going to put a little spritz on my face. All right, you come on. New bottle. Mm -hmm. Dollar Tree. 
yes, you can get some really nice fans at other places, but Dollar Tree has fans that work. I'm going to try that bell pierre while I've got it out. Mm. Creamy, smooth, pretty. I like it. Would I buy it again? Don't know. I have to find out how much it costs once I wear it out. At this point, I've got so many lipsticks in my collection. It's going to take forever to wear out one. Unless I all of a sudden decide to wear one for like two to three months in a row. Every day. Regardless. Whether it goes with the stuff or not. Now. No. You don't have to be elaborate. You don't. You really don't. You don't have to be elaborate. You can be quiet. You can be simple. You can wear colors. You could have used the lighter browns in here instead of any of the line shades. And done the same thing. It's about technique, not about the colors. If you want to wear color, fine. If you want to wear browns, fine. If you want to wear glitter, fine. I've done a real, based on this exact pattern, and it was all glitters. Everything. There was nothing that was not a glitter in that look. Because I wanted the glitter. I keep calling them glitters and they're technically shimmers. I'm I'm not always the best with the terminology. Glitters, according to the current terminology, are usually much more chunky stuff. Uh, my dog wants me to stop filming. Then again, it's getting that block, that time. I, I got to, oh, I'm going to be cutting this pooch back. You don't want to sit and watch it for as long as I've been sitting here talking. Anyway, I'm going to put my glasses on. See, you can, st with your glasses on, you can still see the colors. You can still see that the eye has been made up. Don't use your glasses as an excuse to not do your makeup if you want to do it. Anyway, that's the bell. I'll see how many more of these basics I can come up with. Be good.